Hello everybody, well we are your Hollywood Insider. This is Hollywood Buzz right here on American Hollywood Television. I'm Sumi. And I'm Nikki and we're here to inform you about the latest news happening in Hollywood. Well you know what people, when life throws lemon at you, well make lemonade. But then make sure Jay-Z is happy about it. Because we're talking about this lemonade where Jay-Z is not too happy about it. That's right, Beyonce's new visual album has released and people are going completely wild mm -hmm. over it because in the video she's talking about getting cheated on so she starts off being angry then very sad and at the end she decides to forgive. However, there's a lot of accusations thrown and there's a lot of mm -hmm. name calling so we're, we've heard that Jay-Z is not very happy about it. There are it. a lot of other people who are not happy about this as well. The fact that the album is pretty solid musically has been overshadowed by the drama surrounding its release and especially its lyrics. Obviously, Queen Bey is no stranger to controversy following the minefield surrounding formation, but despite its innocuous title, Lemonade is somehow kicking up even more dust. In addition to the usual hand wringling from cultural conservatives, Pierce Morgan just asked Twitter if white people are allowed to listen to the album. There's been a veritable uprising from Mrs. Carter's most obsessive fans over lyrics that seem to suggest the singer's rap legend Jay-Z was unfaithful. At first it was reported that Jay was cool with the lyrics, but now several insiders are claiming that the hip-hop icon is not happy about his marital strife playing out on a public stage. Jay-Z is not on board with Beyonce's new album, a source close to the situation tells. Well, like the name itself, Lemonade, well, there are a lot of people who are finding this album pretty sour. Yes, especially Pierce Morgan. If you've seen his interviews, well, I certainly read his interviews, and he thinks that it's sort of a publicity stunt, because if a husband and a wife are living in the same house, of course he was going to know about this album, mm -hmm. so there was no need for exactly. all this publicity to happen now. if he does not now. know about it, well, what's going on? Well, Fast Cars action sequences. We are talking about Fast 8. Exactly. Fast 8 is now going to be shot in Cuba for the first time ever and fans are absolutely going crazy, including me. And I'm sure, well, with the location and everything, it's going to be super awesome. So we're definitely looking forward to this and uh, hopefully it's going to release pretty soon. Conan O'Brien journeyed there in March to make Conan the first late night show to shoot on the island post embargo. In 2014, Bob Yaris's papa, the Hemingway in Cuba, became the first Hollywood indie to do the same. And now another milestone arrives as tweets confirm that Fast 8 will be the first Hollywood studio movie to film on the island post-embargo. On Wednesday night, the Fast and Furious Twitter account shared a warm welcome for some of the latest installment local extras. So does this make Vin Diesel, the American studio film industry's ambassador to Cuba? Why is he ready for the kind of responsibility? From the looks of things, he's chill as ever. And given how things are going, well, why shouldn't he be? In addition to the film's historic achievement, the movie will bring straight out of Campton director F. Gary Gary into the mix. On top of his recent critically and commercially successful biopic, Gray also directed 2003's The Italian Job, which on top of its awesome Mini Cooper chase scene also starred Charlie Theron, who will also be starring in Fast 8. Following her recent turn as an action hero in Mad Max, Fury Road, Theron might be the most exciting element of the whole project, especially as she is slated to play the villain. Well, a movie that we're definitely looking forward to, Fast Cars, Action Sequences, Vin Diesel, Charlie Theron, what more do you want? And a beautiful scene in Cuba. So it looks like until Vin Diesel has had enough, we're going to keep getting these movies and we're mm -hmm. so glad. Well, let's talk about The Jungle Book. So let's get into The Jungle. I simply love that movie. It looks like a lot of people did as well. And that's maybe one of the reasons that fan didn't do so well. Jungle Book has become one of the highest grossing movies in India. One of the mm -hmm. highest grossing Hollywood movies in India. It made 24 million ticket sales. Wow. 
uh, one of the reasons could be that uh, the Jungle Book, uh, well, you know, like when we were kids, we used to watch uh, the series, the cartoon. Uh, the cartoon, the animated cartoon of Jungle Book. So probably that's one of the reasons why people are so attracted and so wanted to watch the Jungle Book because they could actually relate to it. The film, based on a collection of stories by Rudyard Kipling, earned more than 24 million in ticket sales during its first two weeks in Indian theaters, according to Disney and Box Office India making it the highest grossing Hollywood film of all time here. One of the secrets to Disney's success was a marketing campaign that tapped into nostalgia amongst young adults for the Jungle Book stories, which revolve around the adventures of an Indian boy named Mowgli. A cartoon series based on Kipling's tales, which was made in Japan, was hugely popular when it aired on state television in India in the 1990s. Disney wanted to awaken the Mughli in every Indian, said Amrita Pandey, a vice president at Disney in India. In addition to children, the movie drew parents, young working adults, everyone who wanted to come see the film, and that happened because we revived their childhood, she said. The studio composed its own rendition of the animated series' Hindi theme song, which has become a generational touchstone for Indians now in their late 20s and 30s. Disney's music video has racked up more than 5 million views on YouTube. Well, if you're one of those people who have not watched the movie The Jungle Book, well, you should go watch it and I would recommend 3D if it's available. It is incredible and it will definitely bring back memories from childhood as it did for me mm -hmm. because I'm the 90s baby and I remember seeing all these cartoons so it's definitely going to bring back a lot of good memories. Though I'm not 90s baby, well, I still loved watching it back then and even till today. Well, people, it's time for Justin Bieber, Bieber Fever again, right here on Hollywood Buzz. Hollywood Buzz isn't the same <laughs> without Justin Bieber every week, and this time he actually wants to turn himself around and be a better person with his Purpose World Tour. Mm -hmm. Well, there had been a roast of Justin Bieber, which was like trying to, you know, like uh, cover up all the negative things that people were talking about him, but that did not do so well. But now, maybe this tour will. Well, you just never know how the spotlight is going to affect a child star. For every Selena Gomez, there's a Lindsay Lohan. For every Taylor Swift, there's a Britney Spears with a shaved head. Justin Bieber is working on veering from the Charlie Sheen path to find the redemption Robert Downey Jr. has earned. While the Biebs may not have the drug use issues of those men, well, he has gone from that Canadian cutie to international bad boy. Now he's busy with his Purpose World Tour, starting in Salt Lake City. Well, he's working his way back into fans' heart with what basically amounts to his Apology Tour, which is pretty amazing considering the pop star just turned 22 on March 1st. Bieber stayed out of the public eye for a while after the legal issues plagued him. He made one of the first public appearances in January 2015 on the Ellen DeGeneres show on the host's birthday. It was a rocky start. He ended up issuing an apology video to fans. He said, I was afraid of what people are thinking of me right now. I did not want to come off as an arrogant or conceited. I'm not who I was pretending to be. I want people to know how much I care. I'm a person who genuinely cares. Well, that's what the glamour, glitterati and celebrity status does to you. Sometimes people handle it pretty well, sometimes they just can't do it. However, like celebrities like Robert Downey Jr., maybe Justin Bieber can also go on the path to redemption and mm -hmm. redeem himself. Fans already love him. He's probably the most popular exactly. person on the world right now. So. And his latest music, well, I simply love them. It's really nice. He's grown up as a singer. All right, people, now let's talk about our very own D-Town girl, Selena Gomez, and her topless pictures. Well, I can see some ice popping. <laughs> <laughs> so Selena Gomez has recently posted some behind the scenes from her revival tour, mm -hmm. and the pictures are very sizzling. They're all topless pictures of Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez has never looked hotter than in a new Instagram photo where her sexy topless body is literally glistening. She looks so happy and she has every reason to be. Her brand new revival tour kicks off on May 6th and she'll be spending the summer with her beloved fans. 
Selena captioned the sexy black and white photo behind the scenes of Revival Tour, Tour Content, which shows her laying back with her arms covering her topless body and she has the biggest grin in the world on her face. She appears to be covered in body glitter of some type because her skin is absolutely shimmering. Selena is surrounded by glowing candles which gives off the photo an even more sexy vibe. It's unclear if she was relaxing behind the scenes while taking a break or if this look, candles and all, will be a part of her new concert act. Selena is knee deep in rehearsals right now, getting her revival show absolutely perfect for her fans. She's even shared photos of herself on stage singing and practicing her moves, with her backup dancers close behind, so Selena is going all out to ensure her fans have the most amazing concert experience possible. Well, there we have it. The topless D-Town girl is what we are talking about. And maybe since she did go to Justin Bieber's concert in LA, maybe he'll go to one of her concerts for a revival tour. Yeah, you never know. So you might just see them together once again. All right, so people, with all those Hollywood scoops, we have almost come to an end of this episode for this week. But then, no worries, we're going to be back next week as well. And make sure you go and follow us on all of our social media sites. We have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we also upload videos on YouTube. And make sure you watch us on Roku as well. So until we meet again, I'm Sumit. And I'm Nikki. And keep watching the American Bollywood television.